OK, let's move on now to national security. And the Middle East is on high alert amid expectations Iran will launch an airstrike on Israel imminently. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has signalled he would retaliate if his country was attacked. German airliner Lufthansa, one of the only two Western carriers who fly to Tehran, has suspended flights to the capital. Russia has warned against travelling to the region and US employees aren't allowed to travel outside of Tel Aviv. Joining me now is our national security expert, Lincoln Parker. Lincoln, great to see you. Likewise. I keep seeing this is much more a matter of when than if, isn't it? Indeed. And so Iran's major supporter and their biggest backer is China. So I think if Iran is going to go hard, they're going to have to get the OK from the Chinese Communist Party and President Xi Jinping. Now, Xi Jinping will do that when he's ready to invade Taiwan. And that may be now. Nobody knows. We certainly know that it's soon. So you're saying that those two events will coincide, you think? You don't think Iran will go first? You think they'll wait? Well, I think Xi Jinping, when he invades Taiwan, is going to want to... Um, coordinate with all of yeah. his allies. Now, his biggest allies are Russia, which is his no-limits partner, mm -hmm. and Iran, and, of course, North Korea. So he's with all the bad guys. That's, that's who we do business with, yeah. is, is the Communist Chinese Party. Um, now, he's going to coordinate that because that gives him the best result that he can to try and stretch the United States military around the world. So the United States right now has a carrier battle group sitting in the yeah. Mediterranean in order to try and protect Israel. Um, so what he wants to do, this is Xi Jinping, is tie up as many of the United States military assets as possible when he invades Taiwan. I don't know why we're even speculating because Biden said they've been warned. <laughs> well, that really worked mm. well last time, didn't it? Mm. Um, talk to me about, uh, we've been through it a, a little bit already in detail, but the implications from a national security perspective of Penny Wong's comments this week on a Palestinian state. Oh, goodness. Uh, look, it, she really has an air of an amateur. Um, and it, it is really unfortunate what she has done for the good name of Australia, um, not standing up for um, the good people, the Jewish people and in, in the democratic Israeli state that everybody is talking about, including you in your monologue. So I think she's either naive or just incompetent um, or she's just doing the bidding of the Prime Minister Albanese because for, for the left wing of the Labor Party, it's politics. Yeah. Um, they don't seem to hold the same values as the ordinary Australian. Because if you poll the ordinary Australian, they absolutely support a democratic Israel in Israel. Yeah. Um, and as you said at the top of the show, you know, Israel doesn't go around um, supporting, you know, death and cheering it on, and, and that's what yeah. Hamas does. I'm glad you say that, because you can sometimes lose sight of the fact that most average people in this country do support that, because... It's the minority that are so loud and get in your face. And, you know, mm. But we've actually got to remember that most people you hope are inherently good and understand how it yeah, works indeed. and want the right thing. Um, Indonesia, th this really surprised me, looking to normalise their relationship with Israel. What is that all about? Well, it stands in stark contrast to what Penny Muslim. Wong is doing, exactly, right? Exactly, country in the world as well. Indeed, and they're yeah. right on our doorstep, 275 million people right on our northern doorstep. Your old man, is, when he was colonel, was over there. And yeah. I understand you even speak a little bit of the language. I do. I'm besok pagi saya akan pergi ke toko, mungkin membeli susu. Yeah, so I do, I speak it, yes. Well done, and, and that's... You know, so, you know, Colonel Jim Mullen, as he was back then, had, had the right idea. We need to be setting up a much stronger relationship with our largest, closest neighbour to our north, and that's yeah. Indonesia. And why aren't we? You know, why isn't the Foreign Minister Penny Wong in Indonesia instead of making these sorts of stupid remarks about Israel, um, sending envoys over to Israel as if, you know, we're so arrogant we can do that? Um, Indonesia is very important to us, to us and it, it's really heartening to see them going out there and wanting to establish a relationship with Israel. Because, as you say, they're primarily mm. a Muslim nation. Under Pandai Sakali, I just said you're very smart. Well done. Just quickly, the Quad, what's the issue? Well, we're not doing anything in Australia <laughs> with regard to the Quad. The Quad was announced some years ago. It's a very important quadrilateral alliance. I mean, you've got India involved. Now, that is a country, it's a massive... Uh, one point something billion people in India. Are they India. the biggest yet or they're projected to overtake? They're projected to overtake yeah. China if they're not already more populous than China. And they're a democracy. They yeah. are, and they play cricket OK. So they, <laughs> they are the country that we should also be out there and starting to do our trade with and, and getting and diversifying away from China and going yes. towards countries that share our values like India. And India is a... Is, in the Quad, along with Japan and, and um, Australia and the United States. But this Labor government has done yeah. nothing 
um, to further the interests of the Quad and for our national security. Instead, they're ripping money out of defence. They've already taken two of our warships out of the water there that, you know, we don't have many warships to begin with. Well, we don't with. have the troops to man the warships, we, even if they are working. We don't either. And yeah. so we have this recruitment and retention problem and the government is doing absolutely nothing on this issue and it's a shame. You're brilliant. Lincoln, thank you so much, as Thanks, always. Mary. OK.